Yeah, so hello student, uh, welcome to the today's lecture. So let us, and good morning, let us start today's lecture. So this is MA415 Algebra and uh, I think lecture number 14. Lecture number 14. Okay, so um, to, to move further about uh, group theory and some classification of uh, this you know sub group other things so we need the idea of something called um, direct product and semi-direct product those things right so let us describe those those ideas what do you mean by direct product another thing okay so so how to define so um, suppose you have um, Say you have two groups, say G1, and you have operation, and another group G2 with an operation, say star 2. Okay, then you define a group uh, G by this. So, yeah, you take the order of order uh, uh, pairs G1, G2, okay, such that this GI belongs to capital GI. And you define the operation on order pair. How? How do you define it? So you take G1, G2, and uh, G1 dash, G2 dash. Um, this is two elements inside this uh, set G, and then you define the new operation as star, and that is defined by G1 uh, star one of G1 dash. Come on, G2 start to of G2 dash. Okay, so so this G1 dash is an operation on capital G1, the group. Okay, so this is known to me, so I, I can find out what is this. Similarly, G2 start to operation on capital G2, this group G2. So this operation is known to me, right? So anyway, then with that of help, then we will again get an element inside uh, G1 comma g2 right so this is we again inside capital g right so if i define my binary operation by g star then this star will be then then the star will be a map from g cross g to g right that is obvious the way i define so this is called uh, component wise or uh, product or a piece of is a component uh, multiplication component, component multiplication okay so under this operation uh, you see that you have this uh, closure property the question is that uh, can you define a group structure on g with respect to this star the answer is yes so so this is associative it is obvious okay so this right so so property so what does that mean? That means so suppose you have three elements, say G1, G2, and um, then you take first this with G, G1 dash, G2 dash, and then this is an element of G, and then you do this um, G1 double dash, comma, G2 double dash. So this will be same as other thing or not that is obvious because the way we define the star it is nothing but g1 star 1 g1 dash comma g2 star 2 g2 dash okay and then you have the star operation with g1 double dash comma g2 double dash okay and again you do it then again if you do this operation then you will have g1 star 1 g1 dash okay g1 double dash here yeah. and uh, similarly here you have g2 star 2 g2 dash and g2 double dash right and you check that this is nothing but this you first this star of this other two elements so g1 dash g2 dash and then you'll have star of g1 
given double dash into double dash. So what does that mean? That means this star operation is associated, right? And uh, then uh, the question is that what will be the identity element? So uh, so you can write down one of G uh, that is nothing but one of G1, one of G2, and so on. One of, ah, sorry, uh, I have two elements only. Ah. So you, you can also define it for more than two. Yeah. So this, this is my this is my identity. Obviously, you can check it. This is the identity. G and then finally for inverse you can check that uh, whenever you have an element say G1 and G2 inverse and that will be nothing but G1 inverse come on G2 inverse okay okay so uh, uh, what does that mean that means the way we define the star uh, makes G comma star is a group and this group we call is a, a direct product of g1 g2 and we write down that g1 equal to g1 cross g2 okay it's called a direct product okay so similarly uh, if you have more than uh, similarly suppose suppose you have say g1 g2 and something gk and then you can define uh, the direct product of G1 cross G2 dot 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 GK uh, similarly. So this will be K tuples and then operation will be point wise multiplication, a point wise operation on the G, right? So uh, so there is no no problem of defining this rule, right? And also you can you can easily check that uh, this this order of the group will be nothing but order of G1 into order of G2 and so on, order of GK. A simple observation. Okay, and also you can extend this idea for infinitely number of groups also. G1, G2, G3, G4, dot dot, infinitely group. Then also you can define this infinite direct product. Okay, so also uh, like uh, uh, for example, uh, so you can you can think about this this Euclidean plane. Okay. So what is the equivalent plane actually? So you have a uh, line, real number, real line, and the real line, okay. And then you define this R cross R, okay. And this you have originally you have R plus, uh, say, R plus. So let me let me just think about this the group. And then you define this uh, plus. So here plus means component wise addition, okay. This is kind of just example of direct product of uh, uh, groups. Sometimes people also call it direct sum also, no problem. Okay. So so you can if from a from given groups you can define uh, bigger groups. Okay. And uh, the interesting part is that the smaller groups are actually have a copy of sitting inside the bigger group. For example, you G1. So suppose I have say. Um, okay so suppose this is direct product of um, g g1 plus g2 suppose this is given to me and then uh, i am saying that uh, uh, that g1 uh, is embedded embedded means what so you have a uh, one one homomorphism. It is not on to homomorphism from this G, right? So that means G has a subgroup uh, which is isomorphic to G one. Now, what is that subgroup? So we can easily find out the subgroup. So, so let me find out the subgroup. Say, uh, okay. So for G one, so let me write down. Uh, this is my subgroup. Okay. So maybe G upper one. Let me write down. G upper one is you collect um, uh, these elements G and then 1 okay and your G belongs to G okay G1 
clear similarly for g upper 2 i can define uh, let's say uh, or maybe let me write down g1 here so that you don't have a confusion 1 and g2 such that g2 belongs to capital g2 okay now you check that both these and these are subgroups they are subgroups of capital group g and not only that this g, g lower one is actually isomorphic to g upper one and g lower two is isomorphic to g upper two the way i define okay with respect to uh, same same operation so here operation is star star so what does that mean that means i am saying that from g star one to uh, sorry this is upper one okay upper one star you have a homomorphism what is the homomorphism it's homomorphism you take an element g1 this is this is a for, for example phi1 what is phi1 phi1 takes g1 to g1 or 1 okay now you check that this is a homomorphism okay this is 1 1 this is uh, um, bijective homomorphism okay so uh, this is an isomorphism rather i should say isomorphism similarly uh, for g2 star 2 to g upper 2 star you have say phi 2 and you can check that phi 2 sent g2 to 1 g2 uh, similarly this is also you can know isomorphism you can check it okay so you have an isomorphic copy which are sitting inside uh, the capital group g okay and then um, and hence you can have projections so so this from g to um, g to uh, this g1 you have a natural or other it's a gi y equal to 102 you have natural projection map what is that so uh, this is so for example what is pi 1 so you know, pi 1 pi 1 sends you take g1 and g2 come on and then you send this to g1 so this is a natural projection which is also again a uh, uh, projection homomorphism homomorphism okay so naturally you can you can define it similarly you can define by 2 which is from g to g2 and then define by by 2 of g1 and g2 that goes to g2 okay this is projection into first coordinate this is projection into second coordinate and same idea you can define it for the k many direct parabola so if you have g1 g2 g3 gk then you can have pi 1 pi 2 pi k all the k many projections okay so uh, so this is the um, um, simple way of defining direct product now the question is that um, do i have a known kind of known copy of direct product uh, which already we have learned in our theory something known thing the answer is yes for example um, we have learned the product of uh, two subgroups okay remember uh, product of two sets when one becomes uh, normal then the product will become a subgroup right so so we can ask this question here for example so let me start with the group g and uh, let me start with uh, two subgroup h and k okay and in general uh, in general uh, this hk i mean i know what is hk this is kind of this it belongs to h small k minus capital to it um, need not be a subgroup right that we know subgroup of g right why because see um, 
the one of the most important uh, problem is that uh, that the representation of the element inside hk may not be unique for example there may be two elements so hk and say h1 k1 they may be equal okay yeah that is possible and then in this case what happened in this case you can write down that h1 dash h equal to k1 into sorry dash means inverse k1 k inverse right and you see that left hand side is element of h right hand side is element of k <coughs> and uh, so they, they they are actually element of h intersection k because h and k are subgroups so h intersection k is always a subgroup right so what does that mean that means for each h and k you have some you, you can you replace h by some element of this multiple of h1 right so you can write down h equal to some a times h1 where a belongs to h intersection k similarly um, i mean similarly that k, uh, k1 equal to or other you can write down that um, yeah, uh, k equal to a inverse k1 k equal to Yeah, so 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 what does that mean? That means you can replace H K by some elements, and still they are the same element, right? Now, how many ways you can choose such K? So such K is such A. You can choose such A. Uh, that depends on the order of the H intersection K, right? So what does that mean? That means um, that uh, the number of so what is the meaning of that? So the number of number of distinct ways of writing um, each element obviously this element of hk in the form hk okay so you, you want to write down in the form each case so that h belongs to h and k belongs to k so that is what is exactly is exactly the number of element inside the h in section k right okay so 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 uh, uh, so this is a one problem so how to deal with this problem so if i choose my hk such that the intersection is one then it is okay right then it become unit right so in particular uh, so, so if H intersection K is one, that means they are they, they intersect trivially only the identity. Then, then uh, every element of H K can be written. Uniquely, uniquely as the product H K kind of thing, right? Okay, so uh, uh, so question is that now um, suppose I have some more information. Suppose I am telling you that my H and K is not only subgroup; they are normal subgroup. Okay, so suppose. I am giving you more information that H is a normal subgroup of G, K is also a normal subgroup of G, and with this condition, H intersection K equal to one. Okay. Then, 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 what can you say about this? This is this is obviously I know that this is subgroup now, right? Because at least one is normal that H can become subgroup, right? But can you say anything nice on this? The answer is yes. Then actually, mm -hmm. what happen? Then the H case nothing becomes. It becomes the direct product of.
okay okay so uh, so uh, how to prove this kind of statement so obviously um, first of all uh, so, so what does that mean that means you want to kind of define a isomorphism right natural isomorphism uh, from uh, from this to this right so obviously this, because it depends on unique so so you can easily write down this thing these maps and the map will be only fine okay so so well defineness is not a problem okay but again um, uh, one can one can one can ask that in that case uh, so let, let me see that in that case what happened in that case uh, so in this case uh, each k become first of all subgroup of g right and then uh, so if you start with say h belongs to h and k belongs to k then what happens then you see that <coughs> uh, k inverse h k is belong element of h as h is in our subgroup of g right and thus that means what if you start with multiply by h inverse so h inverse k inverse h k is element of h okay again you can write down the similarly now you, you start this element see h inverse k inverse h this is element of k right as k is now subgroup of g so you can multiply by k and then h inverse k inverse h k belongs to k right so what does that mean that means these elements are elements of the intersection right so thus h inverse k inverse yes h inverse k inverse h k is the element of the intersection right and it is given that this identity so what does that mean that means uh, uh, h k equal to k h right for all h belongs to h and k belongs to k so this is a very nice observation that whenever you have h and k to know subgroups and then inside the product kind of h k we have this property okay yeah so with the help of this property now let me define that that my phi form okay so this will help me to prove something nicer h k now how do I define? I am defining this um, H K as this is a direct product, right? So this element will be of this form, right? H K. Now question is that um, okay? So this, this is well defined because there is no ambiguity. This is dependent is unique, ambiguity is unique. The question is that uh, how do you know this is C? Obviously you have group structure here and group structure here, right? How do you know that uh, this is kind of uh, structure preserving? So satisfying that homomorphism property. Now to check uh, this phi is homomorphism. homomorphism. What I need to prove? So we start with say two elements, say H K and H one K one, right? This is two element of HK. Now you, you, you go with HK, H1, K1. And another question is that how do how to define this kind of multiplication? This is a natural question, right? But this is I know how to define because I just proved that the element comes to each other, right? Every element they come to each other. So so you can write down this phi of uh, H H one and K K one because H one and K commutes and hence you can write down that is phi of um, okay so so yeah so no what is the definition okay uh, 
what the definition of phi so definition of phi is that this is nothing but h is 1 comma k k1 right inside the um, direct product group but this is again we know this is nothing but uh, h k comma direct product of this point wise multiplication right and which is nothing but phi of h k comma phi of h1 k1 clear so what does that mean that means uh, the way i define this homomorphism i that the map phi is actually homomorphism okay and uh, uh, it, it is a bijection map bijective map that is obvious because uh, you see that uh, uh, this is representation unique right you always write down unique way so you can easily okay let me give you a proof also so so this is normal so how to prove is a bijective map so so uh, and also you see you, you can also tell this thing the cardinality is nothing but cardinality of h a cardinality of k by cardinality of h intersection k right but it is one so it is nothing but cardinality of h cardinality of k which is nothing but cardinality of um, H intersection K, H direct product K, right? So they have the same cardinality. So, th so this is also a proof that the uh, this okay. So this oh, so they, they have same cardinality, but you need to prove this phi is bijective also. So let me give you a proof. This is a bijective map. So so how do you prove it? So uh, so you start with um, H such that H phi of h k and equal to phi of uh, h1 k1 okay now you know that uh, if they are equal what does that mean that means um, okay so so that means you have h k is nothing but h1 K1 right now what is H1 K1 HK are same uh, they, so they are same as uh, kind of um, order pairs so what does that mean that means H equal to H1 and K equal to K1 right and this implies that uh, H and K is same as H1 and K1 okay and this implies that uh, this uh, yeah, so this is done. Yeah, so this is nothing but the injective map, right? But uh, so injective. But you have uh, this both the side function, the set is finite set and have the same cardinality. So injective map is always finite, finite side injective map. So, so by definition, so this phi is a, an isomorphism. Okay, so uh, so you can actually write down this. Um, uh, so uh, you, you can have actually this H is actually isomorphic to H direct product of K. Okay, and this this kind of direct product is called the internal layer product. So uh, the, the, this H K. In this case, HK is called the internal uh, direct product of H and K. Okay, so I should say one more thing. Uh, yeah so, so this is uh, yeah so this is called direct product of groups uh, direct product of g1 and g2 okay and we write down h this as 
external so, so remember so they are see in this case both are same but uh, we want to uh, differentiate by notation so that's, that's why i am writing external direct product of h and k so for internal direct product you have this product notation for external direct product you have kind of this tuple notation right a comma b a comma b okay clear so uh, so uh, uh, you can have some example uh, i mean there are so many examples so just maybe i will show you uh, this in the fundamental theorem of uh, finally generated abelian groups and, and abelian maybe yeah so let's see uh, i will just uh, give you uh, uh, some idea uh, be, uh, today and the proofs will be later followed from a more general thing in theory later i will give you but uh, yeah so uh, so before before uh, uh, no no remark so you can you can ask one more thing that what happen if both a and k are not normal subgroup only one is normal subgroup right so suppose suppose that a is a normal subgroup of g and k is some, some subgroup it may be normal may not be normal i don't care and with uh, a intersection k is uh, sorry h intersection k is identity then still you can define the set h k right and still this is a subgroup of g right because one is normal um, uh, and uh, obviously so so you can ask how you define the group structure that we already discuss now let me again discuss here so you have uh, element h1 k1 and say h2 k2 so you can define this by uh, each one the product how, how the product is again element to each case so each one k1 is 2 and then uh, here you, you have a trick so k1 inverse and k1 and k2 so you, you see that k1 and k2 is element of k and this is the trick because h is a normal subgroup then this element belongs to h right so you can write down that the sum to each one is 3 and k2 k3 k1 k2 right and finally this is something h um, h and k belongs to h k right h1 is three equal to some h h1 h k1 k2 some k right and this is possible because h is number of group of g so you can always define a group operation on this set h k right now interesting part is that with that help can i can i say that it has a nice structures like so so i can say like that uh, so i have k and i know that i can if you find a map from k cross h to h by what by you, you take um, uh, you take a small k and small h and then you send it to k h k inverse right this is again element of h h is an all subgroup okay and the uh, and uh, answer is yes this is possible and that means that k is acting on h right uh, uh, this is via conjugation right and k dot h is nothing but k h k inverse okay yeah so uh, so i can always define those things and i know that whenever i have a um, uh, on some actions uh, they will induce an uh, homomorphism from k to automorphism group of h right you choose an element k and you send it to phi h what is phi h phi h um, uh, sorry phi k and what is phi k phi k of h equal to k dot h okay so you can already define these maps okay so so with the help of all those things if i define a, uh, a my uh, 
group D, which is collection of order pair, say uh, H and K, such that H belongs to H and K belongs to K. Okay, such that what is the operation? Operation is that I am writing H1, uh, sorry, uh, H1, K1. Yeah, and then uh, H2K2, and I'm sending this as this is the interesting part. You look at that H1 is still there, and then you know, I'm taking this because I know the H is not subgroup, right? So so K1 um, dot H2 comma K1 K2 K1 K2. This is only K1 K2. This is the element of. Uh, K and I know that K is acting on H, so we can define the group actions. So K1 is to again element of H, this element of H, right? So, so if I define by this operation, then obviously this map from is map from G cross G to G. Now you check that this map uh, is satisfy all the property of group uh, group property. So 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 under this map, this this set becomes associative, and then. Uh, identity every, everything satisfied okay so uh, um, for example okay so let me uh, give you step forward accessory property then you will understand okay so yes so So to check associative property, what I need to check, I need to check that. So let me write down that um, three symbols I need to choose. So H1 is to, um, so H1, K1, H2, K2, and H3, K3, right? Three elements. Now I will first do this operation and then with that, and then it will be same as the other way. It's obvious because uh, if we uh, if we do first two operations, then what will be the case? So this will be each one, and your um, uh, so yeah so uh, your K1 is uh, this is not the, okay. I, I am writing dot here. I should not write dot here. Each one and then K1 acting on H2 and then K1 K2. Okay, so K1 actor H2 means what? This will be nothing but K1 H2 K1 inverse, right? K1 H2 K1 inverse, and then you have K1 K2, and then uh, you have multiplication H3 K3. Yeah. And now again, if you multiply this thing, then see, then um, so this is again the first element of uh, that. Uh, that set G, and then if we do again multiplication, then what will happen? So we'll have um, the first element will be what? So, so obviously, second element you know what? Second element will be K1, K2, K3, right? And what will be the first element? First element will be uh, so you are writing uh, this is first H1 into K1 dot H2, right? And then uh, H1 into K1 dot H2, and then you are uh, yeah. So then you are writing uh, uh, this uh, K1 K2 uh, K1 K2. This is acting on uh, this H3, right? According to definition, so this is the first element of the set, and then this is the second element of the set. This is clear. I mean, if you don't, if you have a difficulties of understanding, you should try to do it by your hand. And now, uh, uh, so this group operation, you know that uh, this kind of group access as associative property. Now, if you remove this associative property, then what happens? Then you can write down. See, this is H1, K1 dot H2, and then, then, then you just write down all, all whatever you, if you feel, then write down H1 into K1, H2, K1 inverse. And similarly, here also you can write down um, K1 
k1 k2 is and uh, this in whole inverse that is k2 inverse k1 inverse and then k1 k2 k3 okay now you see that uh, this this k1 k2 we can have this identity here right so and then this can this what that is so you can what you can do okay this is h2 i think k1 k2 of is yes okay so now uh, so uh, now uh, this is this will be nothing but you can write down that h1 comma k1 and then the other part is uh, operation on c h1 k1 right so you can write down k1 dot something right what is the k1 dot so k1 c uh, what is your k1 okay k1 inverse here. see look at this k1 inverse sitting here right so so if we remove this part then you'll have uh, dot part right dot part is what h1 h2 k1 k2 h3 k2 right so this part is nothing but what this part is nothing but your uh, h2 k2 dot of h3 k3 and this h1 k1 is acting on that so that's why this k1 and k1 inverse is last step okay so so so, so this is associated this is the proper this is simple h1 k1 h2 k2 h3 k3 okay so the operation difference is associated obviously now um what is the identity uh, this is obvious, so this is 1 1. This identity, you just do it. And what will be the inverse? So, what will be the inverse of that? So, for example, if you choose HK, what will be the inverse? So, the inverse will be is nothing but uh, uh, the second core component you can easily understand K1 inverse, okay, because it's direct product, right? But first component, what will be happening? So, this will be action of K inverse on h inverse this is the element why this is the element you see these elements uh, these elements if you multiply by h k into uh, k inverse dot h inverse comma k inverse then it is identity how because you will have h dot k, h on h of k dot k inverse of uh, dot of it inverse okay and uh, and then you have k k inverse right but k can be identity but here also see this identity action so this is h acting on one dot h inverse and k k inverse identity okay. so denote identity but this is again identity the, the property of group action tells you that identity acting trivial right so this is h inverse so again this identity identity of the group g right so uh, so that uh, for every element you have a uh, such kind of inverse right clear so uh, so what does that mean that means uh, um, that means uh, this g with this star dot is a group the forms a group right and not only that, your age, you, you can say that you have, say, you start with another say, set, uh, say, H1, H blocks to H, so this is inside G, and similarly, say, you set K dash is 1, comma K, K inside uh, K, this is a, a subset of, there, there's a group actually, subgroup of G, and check that e h dash is actually asymptotic copy of h and k dash is actually asymptotic copy of k okay so uh, so uh, so this way you can define uh, uh, these groups and uh, this group is called uh, the semi direct product so this uh, this group g is called the semi 
direct product of h and k okay semi direct product so you understood so what does that mean that means your h is normal and then we write down that h is g uh, semi direct product of, this is the symbol okay clear so sometimes we, we mention okay so h is not subloop of the semi direct product of this but k may not be non subloop when k become non subloop then the semi direct product become the direct product so semi direct product is more general than the direct product every direct product is a semi direct product right so so what, what is this phi actually uh, like what is this kind of operation depend on? So this depend on these group actions. Remember, so I define uh, k dot h by k h k inverse, right? And that was element of h again. So, 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 so I choose a phi. What was the phi? Phi was the homomorphism from k to uh, automorphism group of h, right? Now you see. Uh, I, I can define a different phi also, right? So, so that depends on how many such homomorphism exists, right? And for each such phi, you can define the map. Uh, you can define that h is this with respect to phi. And uh, so, what is what is my phi? So, phi is uh, so 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 we can write down this as okay. So. So phi of um, you see phi of um, yeah so so I, I should write down by this so you have uh, so h one k one and h two k two and then you define the map as h uh, one. Uh, See, so what was the action? A K1 acting on H2, right? So this is nothing but you can write down the phi of um, H2. Okay, so uh, you remember here uh, this. So for under these actions, what is happening? That is the image of H under this uh, K, right? So I can define by this and then K1, K2. Okay, so uh, so that, that depends on this phi. So sometimes that's why people write down that this. So this is called the semi direct product of H and K. Okay, uh, maybe I should stop here because the time is limited. I'm going over time. Okay, and just just for the uh, uh, corollary, you can you can just check it. Uh, not corollary, maybe. I should say that it is following an equivalent and that is very very basic simple calculation you can do it uh, uh, sorry uh, following our equi for the equivalence so first part is that um, see uh, so you have h and okay so before going first part so let me write it down h and k have uh, say they are groups are two groups with so you have phi from k to automorphism group of h this is given suppose this is given to you okay so this is an homomorphism okay so, so obviously uh, the natural map. So, see the way we define semi direct product and direct product, they are all uh, on our pair, right? The only the operation is different, right? So, so what does that mean? That means so from this to uh, this, so both are like on our pair, right? HK and HK. So, you can see that there is a map, natural map, identity map, right? 
So the if the identity map the identity map uh, is a uh, is an isomorphism. See, identity is always bijective. Doesn't doesn't matter. So only thing you need to check this homomorphism. I show morphism. This is equivalent to saying that uh, phi is the trivial uh, homomorphism uh, from uh, K to automorphism group H. What does that mean? Trivial. Trivial means that everything mapped to the identity of H and that is actually equivalent to saying that K is also an all subgroup of H this. and in this case you can check that in this case this is become the direct product okay so 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 um, uh, all the three property are equivalent and uh, uh, then in that case you, your G become the direct product of H and K okay so this is kind of Checking whether it is direct product or not. Direct product. And the proofs are simple. Actually, uh, if you start with uh, assuming one, one is an uh, homomorphism between uh, the identity map is homomorphism between these three things, then you can check that uh, phi is a trivial homomorphism by what you just you, you define the map and then check that your uh, H1, K1, and H2, K2 always map to H1, H2, and K1, K2. And what does that mean? That means that action of K1 on H2 is always H2. So this means that it's a trivial action, right? It's a trivial action is coming from the trivial uh, homomorphism, right? And then in this case, K is also normal because uh, you choose uh, any element of uh, the group HK, and then you, that uh, that uh, the property number two, the trivial homomorphism gives you that. Uh, that absorbs so every element of HK normalized K. So this that means K is normal. So this property, this proofs are simple. So can, so I am I'm letting this are an homework. Okay. Okay. So uh, let me stop here. So uh, uh, so I have learned that. Uh, um, Okay, maybe you can discuss later. Okay, so let me stop.